Hi guys, how is everybody doing? I'm going to wait a couple minutes um, before everybody uh, joins me. And uh, let me just share this video. As always, I'm gonna share it. So I'm just, hi, oh, there we go, there's everybody. <laughs> hi, hi, Nicole, how are you? If you're watching, say hello. So tonight I am so excited because I have a guest that's going to be joining us. Um, her name is Jen and she is um, a licensed um, therapist, psychologist. She runs her own uh, private practice out of Boston and um, she is a friend of mine. And um, yeah, we, you know, I, I was talking to her and we met through uh, mutual friends and I said, you know, this is a time right now where people really need to hear um, things like how to take care of their mental health and maybe some really not generic advice, but um, some real raw advice. And so she's going to be coming on a little bit later to talk about that. Um, but before she comes on, I want to talk to you guys and say hello and um be a beacon of light as i always try to be be a positive light um and i know that after everyone's had such a busy day at work and um people that are maybe not working right now um this is your downtime and your adult time and so um you know, Thursday nights at 8 p.m., um, I relaunched Empowerment Live, which is a show that I started um, about two years ago. I started Empowerment Live. And um, and then I after about, um, I think it was like 12 episodes or something like that, I took a break and we are relaunching Empowerment Live. And so that's what you're seeing tonight. Um, Empowerment Live is a show that I launched two years ago to empower women in, in particular, to educate women, to um, inspire women, to teach them different things, and to have real and raw conversations of, that, uh, of things that women uh, deal with. So hello, Nicole. Hello, Carla. How are you? I see you guys commenting there. Hi, Rebecca. Um, you know, so a lot of times um, people will, sorry, this, this blouse keeps like riding up. Um, a lot of times people will say to me, uh, oh my God, your life is so perfect and it's so, you know, rainbows and butterflies. And I'm like, no, it's not. I promise you it's not at all. It's not at all. Um, you know, just because I'm, I'm a business owner and I don't share um, the deep struggles of the things that I go through, um, that doesn't mean that I don't experience that. And I actually relate a lot to women um, and I connect in person a lot better um, because I'm able to um, share a little bit more than I am in, in a live video, right? Um, but, you know, I want you guys to know, um, as you're watching this, um, to know that, you know, I talk to a lot of people and, um, oh, there's Jen coming on backstage. I see you. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, I want you guys to know that we're in this together, that we are truly in this together. Um, I've had conversations with friends of mine and, and I, uh, one of my best friends, I had a conversation with her 
yesterday because I had not heard from her. And, and so my instinct was, you know, I should call her and see like, what's up. And I called her and sure enough, you know, she was uh, struggling with, you know, the whole situation of having to teach her kids but also uh, she's an essential worker. So having to be at work and how do you manage that? And, you know, all the chaos. And she was telling me it was so overwhelming. And um, and I was like, wow, like, you know, a lot of people, a lot of women right now are facing so much pressure. And so um, I wanted to get a, a, a mental health professional on here tonight for you guys. So you guys have that resource um, so that you know that you don't have to carry all the load by yourself, um, that it's so important. There's no shame ever in getting help. Um, and, and it's so important to also know that we all get help. You know, we all get help. I've had uh, my own uh, season where I needed a therapist. Um, you know, it's it's something that is a part of life, getting help and, and reaching out, right? It's so much better than just being in a dark rabbit hole. And so um, either way, without further ado, um, I want to introduce you to Jen. Um, she is amazing. Uh, like I said, she's a licensed professional. Uh, she has her own, uh, uh, she's the owner of her psychology practice, uh, which is Boston based. And um, I'm going to let her tell you all about what she does and all these great things that she's going to share with us tonight. I want to thank you guys for for watching. Please share this video while you're watching. Please comment so that other people can also see this video. That's just how the algorithm works. When you guys comment, it reaches more people and we are able to help our community even more. So uh, thank you guys. Let me uh, add her on. All right, Jen, let's see. Here we go. Hi. Made it. Hi, everyone. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. I just got out of work. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh what my day. gosh. I thank you so much for being here and doing this uh, and letting me interview you and ask you all these questions that I have for you. And um, yeah, so, you know, if you want to tell everybody who you are. Uh, my name is Jen Nakai and I'm the owner of Aon Counseling and Consulting. Uh, we're based in Lynn, but right now, uh, we got approval for seven new states of telehealth, and uh, we're basically providing services to all of Massachusetts at this point, and also Florida, Vermont, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire. Uh, oh <laughs> wow, that is so amazing. There, there are so many. It just changed because of the state of emergency, and so we decided to tackle this head on because if we learned anything from Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico is that suicide rates went exponentially up. And so wow. we hired three new therapists to handle the, the the sudden like bulk of the load because it just, it's coming over us like a wave and it's gonna get worse before it gets any better. Yeah. But we're here, we're trying. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I am so inspired when I see women like you that really take like by the horns and you're like not afraid you're like you know what let's just get to work let's we have a problem let's fix it let's do what we can um and i'm i'm so grateful that i met you and that you are doing this for not only our community but also you know other states and far away and i know that telehealth is something um that something i've researched because i have a psychology background that's um my work experience and um that's also my college degree is in psychology so i'm very familiar with telehealth and um and i know that some people don't know that that's available uh so i'm glad that you're talking about that and that your company um has that available um, how can people reach you if um, someone needs um, some help? We've tried to make it the easiest intake process available. Some people like to call us and talk to someone right away. I'm the person who answers the phone. Uh, they can always reach us at 617-982-3996, and they could even text. Um, then we have our website. People can just plug in some other information. 
we will be getting back to them with, within 24 hours, but it's usually less than that. Okay. Um, and That's awesome. there what's are, your website? The website is getaonhelp.com, uh, just like Get that. Getaonhelp.com, A E O N. Uh, and we will reach out uh, to you. Everything can be done electronically. Everything can be signed electronically. Uh, we've created a new client portal, so that way all of our consent and HIPAA documents can be managed just online. Right. Signatures, nobody has to worry about anything. And uh, it's been uh, interesting to see how many people in the in the very, very front line of the COVID crisis are, are reaching out to us. Right, right. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I do have questions. I have lots of questions for you. Um, okay. okay. So what made you get into the field of psychology? I had an idea in my teenage years from things that I had witnessed my friends go through uh, about having a center where money is not the reason why people can or cannot go there. I feel like right now in healthcare, you are assigned a place to go according to what kind of insurance you have. And that's not the way it should be. I believe in bringing high quality boutique concierge mental health care even uh, with connection to excellent primary care as well, because sometimes you need that. Yeah. A lot of the times, actually. So that <laughs> primary care integration made a yeah. lot of sense to me. But it, I basically wanted to have a high quality treatment place for people across the lifespan where finances are never supposed to be the reason why people can't come. Maybe you couldn't make it because of the weather. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, finances shouldn't be the reason. And I think from there, I went, straight into behavioral neuroscience because then I thought at first that maybe I would be a like a like a medical practitioner but then that changed again um, <laughs> it really changes as you go uh, but I, I ended up getting my master's my clinical master's and then afterwards I got a business degree and it's funny because they don't teach you how to have a business in psychology school they don't they don't <laughs> Right, and it's two separate different things. So I was very lucky uh, that That's I was awesome. able to, to get. Where did you attend school? I'm sorry. Where did you attend school? I went to Northeastern for behavioral neuroscience and theater. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, then <laughs> I went to Simmons for my social work masters. Then I went to Wheelock for the business one, specifically for therapists. Okay. Uh, then I went to Harvard Medical for a specialization in um, healthcare management. Okay. And then also I did an extra little certification around primary care uh, integration with behavioral health. And that's where I feel like you get the most bang for your buck. It's when you can work closely with your therapist and your primary care together. Sometimes they're not in the same location. Yeah, work very closely. So I, I like to build a nice whole contact sphere of people who can support us around that. So when our clients come to us, they don't just get a therapist. Right, right. And we'll sign you up for all sorts of entrepreneurial activities. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And the best primary care. And let me get your meds for you. And don't worry. Uh, you know, we're going to get through this. As well, yeah. as feeding the spiritual, right? We yeah. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Um, so for you, um, what are some of the obstacles that you face um, as a woman, you personally? Like, what are some of the obstacles um, that you have? Day. What is that? That's an everyday obstacle from the, <laughs> from the minute I wake up in the morning to when I go to bed at night. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, from being judged because I'm a young business owner uh, to having to prove my worth, to having to yeah. basically work double for the same amount of things. Yeah. <laughs> um, but trying to dominate in a man's world and doing it and doing it correctly and working twice as hard to do that. Yeah. Um, and you're killing it. That's amazing. You have your own business like your own private practice that's like a dream like well, also a dream group of people like uh, this this team made that happen i just kind of like 
put them all together and said, okay, what can we do? And then they just made it go to the next level. I couldn't have done it at all without every single person who works there. That's awesome. Yeah, I do. I'm a firm believer that whoever you surround yourself with, like could really um, enhance you, could really elevate you. And together you can all grow and, and like go to the next level and just level up together, you know? I mean, I only hire therapists, for example, who I feel are better than me. Like, I need to be the most trash therapist in that group, basically. <laughs> I, I yeah. want to surround myself with titans at all times. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be the good there. That's a great mentality. Um, I yeah, I like to say there's a saying that I have that I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I don't want to be that person. I want to be in a room where people are smarter than me and I can learn from them, right? right? Um, and, and that's what you've done. You've hired people that you know are titans and together you can all grow. That's, that's amazing. That's a wonderful um, message. Um, and how do you overcome obstacles that come your way, especially being a woman, being a business owner, um, you know, all these things. How do you overcome like these obstacles that come your way? That's a good, that's yeah. an excellent question. Mostly by fighting. Um, <laughs> it's not the best. No, I don't recommend it for everyone. <laughs> I happen to be very good at it. No, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be fighting. I shouldn't have to fight for these types of things, but I just feel like standing up for myself, A, standing up for other people, B, uh, because just let's say this um, feminist issue is affecting me as a female right now, but perhaps things that affect people of color don't necessarily affect me right now, or perhaps uh, trans issues are not affecting me specifically right now, I'm still going to stand up for those issues at the same time. Yeah, um, that's well, wonderful. Uh, well, you have to, and I find that the social justice piece to my to the work that I do, yeah, is my favorite. Yeah, yeah, I love I love um, social justice, you know, and and in psychology, um, I learned that there's a lot of injustice. Um, but you know, you also experience it yourself. Like I experience injustice all the time by being Latina, uh, by being a female, um, you know, I experience all kinds of, uh, racism and, um, just injustices left and right. Like I've learned to just keep pushing forward and, and not give too much attention to that. Like if I need to fight for my rights, I will totally do that. Yeah. Um, you know, but it, it's about being focused um, and, and focused on your mission um, and definitely sticking up for people. You know, um, that's why I created um, this show, Empowerment Live, why I created my morning tea talk, um, because it's all about educating women on, you know, they have a lot of power. Like we have a lot of power. And I think a lot of um, people feel powerless um, and they don't realize that um, they're giving that power up. Like we actually have a lot of power. We just need to have the courage to use it. Yeah. Yeah. I, agree. Um, awesome. I think there's a lot of, sorry, my dog <laughs> to play with me right now. <laughs> uh, you have a dog. Let's yeah. see your dog. My dog is, let's see. Moses, come here. Thank So then you come up here. Okay. Maybe he doesn't want to come all the way up here. Oh. Where do we have a dog? Is he here? Hi. Oh. Oh my God, look, it's so cute. There you go. All right. Oh. <laughs> Off you go. Oh my God. He What's your dog's name? Moses. Moses. Ooh, I like it. He's a good boy all the time. Um, where were we? In awesome. The of racism and misogyny. Yes. Every day. Yes. Every yeah. day is an issue. Yeah. What, um, so as a business owner, um, how is it being a business owner during the pandemic? How are you handling it? Um, I, I get a lot of questions. Um, uh, I'm a part of the Labo group, which is the Latino, um, yeah. Latin American uh, business organization. And okay. um, 
uh, you know, I get I'm going to be doing these business workshops to teach businesses how to um, survive and, and overcome their obstacles during a pandemic. Um, how are you doing in terms of business during this pandemic? Uh, you're doing surprisingly well, except that that's kind of sad to me because the worse we do in society, the more hopeless we become, the more we reach out sometimes, right? Some yeah. people reach out, some people do not. Mm -hmm. And so it makes me sad to see that now the phone calls that we're getting are are very different. These are not just folks who are like, you know what, I want to process my breakup or I want to talk about self-esteem. Those are regular intakes and people okay. call all, all the time or I've been through an abusive relationship. Okay. The phone calls now are becoming... Uh, my son committed suicide last week. Wow. He help. I've never been to therapy and I'm 67 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. So or, it's it's, huh? It's very deep stuff. It's much deeper. Uh, I think it's going to get a little bit more intense the closer we get to June and June to August should be the worst. If we, if we look at the way that PTSD criteria are met, it's that three to six month period is where we're going to see the, the repercussions of everything that happens. And, and we might still be inside. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. And that's, I, I think it's scary. I think right now the best thing I can say is if your business does not support an online platform, it's, it's gone. Yeah. Um, so uh, we were blessed and very lucky to work with an incredible marketing team with a fantastic web designer with an incredible graphic artist even. I mean, we set this up two years ago. Last year, I include I started including telehealth. My therapists were like, we don't wanna work telehealth. We don't like that idea of not being there with people. And I said to them, you know, it's the way of the future. Let's just put one picture on the website and make it its own service. Mm -hmm. Very few people signed on. I had one therapist who was doing telehealth full time. Okay. She, wow. she could see the vision. She could see the whole, yeah. like, well, the long term, I can be at home with my kids and I can still work. That's so the her, beauty of it. Yeah. For her, that was a big deal before the pandemic. And then all of a sudden within a day's notice, um, about two weeks before the state of emergency was declared, we were already staying home because yeah. it wasn't worth it. And because we had this option in a moment's notice, we, our entire platform changed to online but we had the infrastructure there already. So it was yes. fairly easy. It was fairly easy. And right now, if, if marketing is not your forte, take as many classes as you can because digital strategy is the only it's thing. Everything. It's everything. Um, I, I launched um, a health business um, in January. And so I didn't know the pandemic was going to happen, but I knew my business would run 100% online. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my plan was for it to run 100% online. And then after the pandemic hit, I was so grateful because it was already there. The platform was there. My my customer base was there. Um, you know, so I didn't have to do much different. Um, and, and so now I'm just focusing on teaching other businesses um, how to move everything online, uh, how, teaching um, clothing stores, how to put all their inventory online and, and things like that. So you have to learn what I tell people is you have to learn to adjust to the circumstances and and just, you know, think outside the box, basically. I've been telling everyone that obviously there shouldn't be an expectation for you to create your masterpiece during this pandemic. I feel like some people are creating incredible banana bread and just they're making the best carne guisada available. I did that. I did yeah. that. that was, that's a personal example. But but I think we're all going to react like like people who are traumatized. If we normally are people who who fight in the face of trauma or who fight in the face of danger, then we're gonna I think push towards this this problem versus the people who are people who like folks who flee right. usually or yeah. retract or who freeze. Um, go through your experience of trauma, experience it in your body, 
integrate it with your mind as much as you possibly can. If you're not a fire fighter, you're not a fighter. That's fine. Right, right, right. That's <laughs> yeah. That the fighter in me has come out even worse. It says it's almost yeah. like what's going on right now. Am I gonna hurt someone? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a certain level of stress you can take, you know? And no, it's so true. It's so true. Um, you know, I I thrive. I actually thrive uh, under pressure. Um, you know, like when I'm when I'm doing my college exams and, and things like that, like uh pressure is like I am on top of it. Like I am I'm such a fighter. Um that pressure doesn't make me crumble. Um, but I do realize that some people pressure, um, you know, really affects them in a negative way. Um, it's that fight or flight situation, you know? Imagine, imagine how many people were already in fight or flight before this whole thing started. Yeah, yeah. So then it starts and it's just like, it, it just keeps getting more uh, difficult. Uh, they feel more hopeless. And so uh, in the past couple of weeks, I lost a friend in Puerto Rico. Oh, no. Yeah. And it just, it's heartbreaking to me that we're sometimes just not able to access the services. And it's true that most counseling agencies, I don't know if you've noticed this, mm -hmm. we have a several months wait list. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I experienced that, like, when I was counseling, I did counseling for 15 years and I remember trying so hard to get, I, I, I dealt with patients who had mental illness, like schizophrenia, you yeah. know, um, uh, so many different things. And then I moved over to the drug addiction um, unit and then I was in the crisis stabilization unit. And so I bounced around um, at the clinic that I was working at and um, one of the biggest struggles and challenges that I faced was getting a therapist for my clients. And uh, I would hear, oh, it's a three month wait list. Oh, it's a six month wait list. And if you're Spanish, forget it. More. Like, you're right. gonna, you're, you're gonna have to wait a long time before you see a therapist. And so, um, you know, I was I was very um, shocked that not enough people get into the field. And, and so into the psychology field. Um, and so there's like a shortage basically and a big high burnout rate too. Super shortage. They don't even pay therapists the way that they should. Um, yeah. Language capacity is very difficult. We're super blessed to have multiple Spanish speaking staff, Brazilian, Portuguese and Chinese. Uh, I don't think we use as much the Chinese just because of the North shore area, but now that it's going to expand to the rest of the nation, yeah. uh, I'm hoping that it will. We get people in, I mean, we triage within a day. And then depending on the availability of the therapist, it, it is less than a week. I'm talking wow. about. Wow, that is so good to know. So people really need to know. Tomorrow, Like Friday, you know, you might not get in until Monday or Tuesday. That's fine. But it, it, I, you know, we have enough therapists right now, and the, we beefed it up specifically to have capacity to build capacity mm -hmm. to handle the the wave that's coming. Um, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully that's enough. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, so my next question is. Um, uh, I know you mentioned it briefly, but um, what do you see as the major mental health problems that are arising during this pandemic? Capitalism. Ca yeah. <laughs> Capitalism. Capitalism affects mental health. Anytime you exploit people for their labor and you expose them and you try to make a profit beyond uh we using people like as a front line but more to like make profits off of certain goods i'm talking about companies like amazon which are very large employers and affect a lot of people at the same time these folks don't even have health insurance what are they gonna do if they if they get yeah so it, yeah. It's, it doesn't make any sense i feel like we're sometimes putting money over lives yes yeah money comes and goes but if you're dead you're dead exactly 
And so I had a friend that lost four people in her family to Corona died Four people in her family. And I was like, when I got the call, I was like, Oh my God, like what? Like four people died in your, in my friend's family. Like losing one person is going to be <laughs> traumatic. Imagine if we've had, you know, a couple <laughs> hundred thousands of deaths or a couple dozen thousands of deaths it doesn't matter that's a lot of more death than usual you know right right i think there's going to be grief i think there's going to be lots and lots of trauma uh, i think people with underlying mental illnesses are going to be extra stressed out yeah and so taking care of ourselves and taking care of our neighbors from a distance i guess yeah. uh, it's a way just making sure that everyone has everything they they need. And I am really seeing a lot with food insecurity in the past couple of weeks. This, the whole not having access to food so easily, even for those of us super privileged, um, if it causes this much anxiety in me, imagine someone who doesn't who's living paycheck to paycheck. And now that everything's more expensive, uh -huh. because in the middle of a crisis, we're trying to make money off of people. Right, right. Um, yeah, no, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Um, for my stimulus check, but I feel like I've spent four times the amount of, in food than I have ever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're doing like, yeah, it's like $600 like a weekish or so. Like it's, it's a lot. And I have a family of four. Um, you know, we, my husband and I, and we have two kids. And uh, we're definitely spending a lot more money than we were before on food. Um, but I'm grateful that I, that we have the means that we have, you yeah. know, that like you said, we're pr privileged um, to be able to provide that and not have to worry about it. Um, but it is the people that don't have that, that do, you know, I do think about, uh, I've done a lot of posts where I've shared like, Hey, if you need food, just like send me a DM. Like I've been giving away money to people and just trying to help out in whatever way I can. Um, because I do believe that if you have, you know, you really should give. Um, but I did notice the capitalism, you know, I did notice that. And it's very unfortunate um, because, like you said, um, lives matter over money. Um, you know, money should not be the driving factor, um, you know, and 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 just little things that we can do for each other. Um, like if I see my neighbor, like he's a single man, he lives by himself in this huge right. house. And, um, you know, and if I see him like cutting his leaves or whatever i'll just like scream across the, win the window or something and be like hi how are you i hope you're doing well you know and that little uh moment of connection um you know really matters to people checking on your neighbors checking on your friends checking on the people you haven't heard from in a while yeah uh, yeah because it's it's gonna i think it's gonna hit us and it's inevitable in many ways but i think there's gonna be kind of a wave of sadness um yeah. Yeah. And, and I for each other. Yeah. I um I saw that too when this pandemic started to happen. Um I noticed that certain people in my life um were who I knew had underlying um you know behaviors or mental illness. Um but they weren't taking it seriously, like they weren't seeing a therapist or something like that. They had like a breakdown you know, when this all happened, um, you know, a lot of anxiety, a lot of anger, a lot of confusion, um, uh, just uh, uh, all kinds of uh, distortion in their minds um, wow. that I was like, wow, like, why are people freaking out? Like, what is going on? And then I realized, like, oh, my God, like, these people are not handling this well mentally and they don't have a therapist. They don't have someone to talk to. Um, and so I really, I think that there's such a stigma around therapy, um, that it needs to be, it needs to end. Like people need to know, like you need to get help. Like if, if you're having some type of negative emotion, if you're like, you know, angry or lashing out or, you know, hateful or whatever it is, like that is a negative emotion. Like you got to get help, you know, talk well, to someone. 
I think that's also why we're seeing a rise in domestic violence. Uh, I think uh, people yes. are frustrated, which you know leads to men becoming frustrated, which leads to men becoming aggressive. <laughs> it's just everything is connected and everything is a copy and a copy and a copy. And I want to reach and cover as much as possible because it's going to be interesting to handle this much grief. We're seeing our first responders. You and I were already a part of a conversation already last week uh, where we where we're seeing that these folks are, are looking at death multiple times a day. And even though they are medical providers, perhaps they don't look at death every single day. You know, losing a patient, one patient in a, in a year is a big deal. Obviously, our nurses and stuff like that are more prepared, but when it's multiple times a day, yeah, that will play with your with your thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> that, that does that thoughts. does mess with you. Um, mm -hmm. When I I worked um, in a group home where there was women with HIV and drug addiction, yeah. and that's like you know a really bad combo, <laughs> and and women would die in that group home like they would just drop like flies, and. Um, that was when I decided to stop working in the psychology field because that was like my limit to, to watch people die on a regular basis the way that I was, yeah. um, you know, and you, you get attached to the patient to some degree, you know, you, oh, yeah. you, you definitely, when I worked um, in the clinics or in group homes and I was a counselor, like I would, you get to know these people. And so you know, you look forward to seeing them and their smile and things like that. And then they're gone and it, it hits you as a, as a professional, it hits you. Oh, oh, I mean, I know for therapists where we're not looking at death necessarily every single day, anytime a therapist loses a patient, there's like all sorts of therapy that's got to happen for the therapist behind the scenes. <laughs> Imagine being a nurse exposing yourself every single minute of for at least eight hours or 16 hours sometimes because these these folks are working a whole lot and mm -hmm. a lot of our patients are exactly in that front line and what we're hearing is we don't have protective equipment um more and more people are coming in every day and it's mostly folks who are not believing what's going on yeah that's the other part like i can't believe that there's people out there that still are like, oh, this is exaggerated. Oh, I'm like, this is not exaggerated. I respect. I mean, <laughs> respect. I'm just like, like, but there are people that are very ignorant about the whole thing. And unfortunately, they're the ones that are spreading all of this because they're not taking the measures that yeah. they need to take, you know? Yeah. And I, I think at the core, when you're asking about mental health and, and how it relates to everything that's going on, when we don't have empathy yeah. for our, for, for the rest of the people, this is, this is kind of what happens. Then, then yeah. we're all in trouble. We're all of us are in trouble. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is so true. Um, do you have any advice? I know one of your specialties is um, couples, right? Um, so do you have any advice for parents or for couples um, on how to handle their stress and, and all of the responsibilities and all these different things? Yeah, I would say we need to focus as much as possible in our self-care. I think people think that when I when therapists say self-care, they mean like, let me watch a TV show. I'm going to unwind watching a TV show. No. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about high quality self-care activities. I'm talking about doing things that literally lower your blood, uh, your blood pressure, mm -hmm. um, having some CBD tea. Hey! <laughs> Yes, <laughs> nice listen, plug. <laughs> listen, as much CBD as you can get in that body, please do put it in there. Please do. That is very much super uh, like mental healthy. Okay, that this is a super green light. We're very much into that, um, and uh, I think having a healthy balance of moving your body in some type of way, even if it's meditation where you're sitting with your friends, trying to collectively relax, uh, yeah. like Cor and I have been doing in this incredible meditation yoga combo. I, I love that. 
Zoom team, it's like a Zoom team for wellness. Make up a wellness, Zoom wellness group, yeah. <laughs> Um, if, if, if we're not connected, if we don't stay connected to our bodies, what ends up happening is that we're going to snap at the kids. Yeah. Which they don't deserve that. Cause they're already, right. they're already confused. Like, what do you mean? There's no school. They're probably excited and scared at the same time. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> they don't know what to feel. They're, they're like scared one minute. And then the next minute they're happy. And they're like, wait a minute, what's happening in the world? But I've also <laughs> seen parents reconnecting with their children where maybe their relationships were not as strong and they're taking the, the moment now to sit back and enjoy with their kids as much as possible. Um, obviously financial stressors are going to get in the way of ev everything that you're doing, but if we could just use this as an opportunity to calm down for a second and just take a look at where we're at, what are the relationships that matter uh, for couples I'm hearing what I'm hearing everywhere is that divorce lawyers are going to make a lot of money when this whole thing is over. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord! A whole lot of money. I'm just saying. I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, but I yeah. have been finding that even since we did our last quarantine dating podcast, uh, what I'm hearing a lot of single folks even say is that it's now practically impossible, right? Now, now it's gone from wow, it's hard to date to teledating. Teledating. It's basically worse. <laughs> so uh, I would say the more self-care activities we can get in there per week, the yeah. better from exercising. And I'm not a huge exercising buff or anything. I'm just saying yeah. that any, even if it's 30 minutes uh, of mind-body integration would be very helpful because we're all going to be experiencing these symptoms of like, we're all going to be trauma reactive. Right, right. This is a traumatic um, situation yeah. that we're all in. Um, I, I know that for me today, um, like my day started off weird. Um, you know, my kids, um, we have a routine and we have a set schedule that we follow every day. And, you know, my routine is I get up, I drink my tea. Um, Oh, that's my mentor calling. Um, I drink my tea. You know, I have my meditation. I have some yoga. I do my hair, my makeup. You know, I practice a lot of self-care first thing in the morning. And I teach my kids to do the same exact thing. And um, this morning it was a little off. And, um, oh, what was it? My son's iPad. So he usually talks to his teacher on it. And he deleted the, the app and then I couldn't get on it. And he, you know, it was like, ah, you're going to miss your call with your teacher because you deleted the app. And, the, you know, my husband had changed the password and, you know, it was very stressful <laughs> for me in the morning. So I was like, you know what? I'm canceling my tea time. I'm canceling everything. I literally canceled all of my work uh, meetings for the day um, because my day didn't start off right. And I didn't want to bring that energy anywhere. You know, I wanted to just uh, focus. I wanted to calm down. I wanted to make sure the kids were okay. Um, and that, you know, they, I didn't want to rush and like feel like uh, all this pressure, like I have to do this. I have to be at this meeting or I have to do that. Um, and I think that for me, it's very important to have boundaries and know when I'm stressed, I don't function well when I'm stressed. Like pressure is one thing, but stress is another thing. And um, being in a in a disturbed, upset mindset or something like that, I just rather calm down. Um, so I canceled all my meetings for today. And then uh, when my husband got home from work, um, I said, let's do some yoga. Like, let's I needed to do yoga again. And uh <laughs> I, you know, he was like, what kind of activity you want to do, like as a couple, because we like to do couple activities during the day. I said, you know, I just want to do yoga and like us be in the same room quietly meditating. And we did that. We did it for about 30 minutes. And I put meditation music on. We did some yoga poses. We stretch our body. We laughed a little, you know, <laughs> and 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 uh, as a couple, that to me was uh, the best part of our day today in terms of my relationship with my husband. So that self-care, I, I do think um, that is 
very important for couples to to do little things like that. And when I get off this live, I'm going to go do some more self care with him. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm talking about even something as small as hold on, I have it right here as adult coloring books. Oh, I love those. And you can get as weird with it as you want, like serial killer coloring books oh. for adults. <laughs> Just. You know, you can get weird with it. It's it. It should be interesting. You know, you can yeah. read about murder as you paint by the numbers. But <laughs> I'm just saying that sometimes for couples, I don't know if you've noticed that being together a little too much can be too much. Oh yeah, I Most have um, kind of individual activities. Yes, um, we have a thing. Like we know. Like I've been, you know, with my husband for over ten years now. So. We know, like we we. Uh, I'm very good at observing, and you you know when you're in the psychology field, like you study behavior, you study body movement, language, facial expressions. I, I study people, like I can't help myself, you know. Um, so I know when like he's off, you know. I could sense it, and so I just give him space, you know. I'm like, all right, you know, he needs space. Or like if one of the kids is off, I'm like, okay, they need space. Like it's very important to know when when people need space. Yeah. Sure, Let's for see sure. my next question here. Um, what kind of fun things do you have you been doing during uh, the quarantine at home? Are you learning any new recipes or knitting or taking up a hobby? Okay, because I have more time, <laughs> I've been trying to uh, be a vegetarian. Actually, oh. I've, I've been trying to get my little garden started. I think that we need to start working on sustainable yeah. methods for food. I yeah. think I'm going to try to grow these zucchini because <laughs> what if I can't find zucchini in a month? Like, what's Right. Happen? So uh, I've been. That's a good idea. I'm going to put that on my to-do list. Yeah. Oh, I've been growing different herbs. I'm like, I'm all worried about what if we, <laughs> what if we want to. Right. If you have the land or the space, you might as well do it. I don't. I'm just putting it in windowsills and like trying to stuff as much of it as possible. All uh, right, you're in Boston, so you're you don't have the um the yard situation. I don't have the yard. I had to buy like a raised bed, and now I'm like trying to hustle for some soil. <laughs> <laughs> We're just the real Walking Dead right now. Okay, We're it now. is. It is. I feel like it's totally the Walking Dead. Uh, we need to find supplies. We're gonna have yes. to find blend. Yeah, that's what I tell my husband when he goes to the grocery store. <laughs> like he's fully covered, gloves, mask, like the whole nine. Mm -hmm. And then you know when he gets home, we like spray everything down with bleach and like um he like takes his clothes off before he enters the house, like in our hallway, and then puts it in the laundry. Then like takes a shower, then disinfects the bathroom. It's like a full process. Yeah. So when he's done with that, I'm like, did you make it alive from your run? Like, I'm like, this is the walking dead right now. The, walk, the real walking dead. <laughs> yes, I'm, yes. I mean, like fighting with Instacart about all, I, I mean, I'm just trying to have things delivered, but at the same time, you're still putting another person at risk instead of you. So I even feel like that's a bad strategy. I don't know. Um, yeah. As far as fun things to do, lots and lots of artwork, as much coloring as possible. Of course, co like cooking healthy meals is one of the ways that I do self-care for myself now. I don't feel like I did that for a long time in my life. And so even just the way that I met you, going to these types of wellness uh, events yeah. has changed my life for the better in many, many ways. But just eating well right now, even just knowing that I that I tried hard enough to just have food that's actually gonna nourish my body, even in the in the context of survival. What if I need to like run really, really fast, right? right. Like, <laughs> much better physical shape just for my general survival. I think that's where my head's at lately, where it's just like I'm gonna have to do everything exactly by the book. Yes, yes. If I want to make it through the walking dead. <laughs> yes, that's so true. I have been learning new recipes and I'm, I've been, um, 
you know, since I launched my health business in January, I, but even more now, um, I'm just figuring out new recipes, making sure that I don't like order out and just making sure I'm cooking, even though I'm cooking like three times a day and it's definitely a lot, um, you know, to be cooking that much. Um, but I, I'm making it fun. You know, I'll put music on in the kitchen. I'll be like dancing and like, uh, I'll get my kids involved. I'll be like, hey, you want to come learn how to make this? Um, like I, I made a, a seafood paella today and I have never done that. Hey, that's a hard good. one. You went straight for the hardest, the hardest level of cooking. <laughs> Spanish cooking. Yeah. I was like, I have never done that. And I'm not the, the Latina girl that um, was born with this like grace in the kitchen that you could just like sprinkle anything and it's wonderful. <laughs> no, I'm the Latina girl that burns stuff in the kitchen. And so, you know, it's been a learning process for me, but today's meal was not burnt and it actually tastes really, really good. I was so proud of myself. <laughs> You know what else I've been doing a lot of is reading. Reading? Um, what are you reading? I am <laughs> I'm reading a business book uh, with help, that helps with sales strategy. I am, because I, I started a couple of new books. I I'm reading also a book uh, from Lori Cabot. Uh, okay. She's the official witch of Salem. Oh, okay. And so it's actually a book about, you know, how feminism and and capitalism are the reason why a patriarchy was even established uh, and how calling a woman a witch became the way that we were just going to like shun them and give them less and, and lock them up and burn them and murder them, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. It's, I find I found the book to be fascinating. A friend of mine recommended it. I bought it on Amazon. Loved it. Wow. Love it. I just what is finished the name of it again. Uh, it's called a hold on. It's right here. <laughs> it's a book, but you know the name. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Is ooh, yes. Yes. The power of the witch. Holy smokes. And so it's a local author. Um, and the other book that I finished, finished, and that one, I had been working on it for a while, but I finally, I've been just, just trying to get a lot of books out of the way. Cause I feel like I buy books and then I don't read them. Oh yeah. Sometimes I do that, but I've been getting much better at it. Right. Um, I, 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 I love reading. I, I did not always like to read. Um, but now like, I don't know, it's something later on in life, like I just picked it up and now I like love it. Audiobooks help me go. Audiobooks. I love I have a membership to Audible. Yep. Love it. I just finished um The Modern Man's Search for a Soul by Carl Gustav Jung. And for those of us who are more psychology minded, I think it it's a wonderful book uh to learn how clinical relationships can be meaningful and how they can reflect one another. Um, but also how we can uh, fit into certain stereotypes or archetypes. Right. I don't know. It was mm -hmm. just very interesting, which now that I finished that one, I have to read like seven more from him because you have to get the whole series. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to absorb as much information as I possibly can during this time. Yeah, it's a good time to be learning. It's definitely a good time. Um, how do you stay focused and achieve your goals during the hardest times in your life? That's a tough question. <laughs> I have had very good role models and I have excellent support. Without my support team, I would not have been able to get that far. And the funny thing is that part of my support th team now uh, are the employees at Aon. They've become a big part of my support team. We've kind of become a little bit of a family. Okay. Like even when it comes to like food and distributing things, it's just like we've been watching out for each other in the past couple of weeks and it's beautiful to see. So uh, it's like your circle, basically. Oh, like, it's like, like your coming. circle is what... Look at that. I always say that. I always preach that to people. I'm like, your circle affects you so much. Whoever is around you the most 
affects you so much. And that per those people can either hold you back, right? Or they can help you. I'm talking about your non-drinking friends. Yes. Let me explain what I mean by that. Your drinking buddies are not the people that I'm talking about. I'm talking about having a solid team of when you say I can't anymore and I have had mo I have had moments where people have had to help me, okay? Because people yeah. think you're a therapist, you must be perfect. Absolutely oh, not. No, no. I have my moments and like people don't believe me. Like I will tell them like, you know, you don't understand the kind of problems I deal with like are 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 pretty bad. Like are pretty heavy serious problems that I deal with. It's just how you carry yourself and how you handle it and who's around you, who's your support system that allows you to manage the problems a little bit better. A lot better. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Having, having friends who are there no matter what uh, has really helped me feel like I have a family, especially in Boston because I'm not from here. So yeah. for, for sure. The only way that I've gotten through the past couple of years is because of the people who've stood by me and not a lot of people do, and that's fine. And it can be a very lonely place, uh, but I wouldn't do, I wouldn't have it any other way. And the core team at this point that is established, I mean, these are folks who've been around for years and years. And so I that's awesome. kind of owe it all to them because when, when Jen is a mess, <laughs> <laughs> We do yoga. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> somebody will go with me. It'll be somebody will show up with me. Trust. Watch. Yeah. yeah. And so it's just been like people like Jesenia, for example. These are these are excellent friends and and folks who try to motivate you in business and you motivate them and yeah. working with each other. And it's just like it's never a competition. There's enough for all of us. Yes. And empowering yes, life. It's about women. Yes. Uh, yes. I, I like the hashtag um, community over competition, you know, um, community over competition. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a good one. Huh? That, yeah. I've never, I've never even heard of it, but it sounds amazing. Cool. Yeah. I, I post it. I share it on my, on my social media and that's what I try to promote is community over competition. Because I, I just, I believe it at my core. I've seen what, when women unite, when people unite, what can be accomplished. Yeah. And, I, and, and I've seen people when they become selfish and try to do things, you know, on their own and, and like don't want to help other people. And I've seen both of those worlds and I learned very quickly community over competition needs to be everybody's mindset. It really does. Um, it, it just, it helps everyone. It helps everyone, you know? And I always say like, what, what fun is it? Like, uh, I, I did a speech once, um, to a group of young teenagers. And, um, so I, I have a, a Mercedes, right. And, uh, my car was parked out front and where I was doing the speech, they could see my car. And um, they saw me like coming in. And so they knew that that was my car. Right. And I'm talking and I'm telling them, talking to them about life. And, and like I, I keep telling them, listen, uh, watch your circle. Uh, always keep in mind to help those around you. Right. Community over competition. And one of the kids said, you know, I just want to I just want to be a rich rapper and and just buy a car just like the one that you have. And I said, and I said to him, I said, um, when you become a rich rapper, are you going to be by yourself or are you going to help people? You know, like, what do you plan to do with all your money? And he was like, well, I'm just going to buy all this jewelry and, and all this stuff. And I said, listen, that I promise you that is not fulfillment. Like you will not be happy when you get there. When you finally get there, you will not be happy. And and I told him this and it, it like sank in, you know, he was like, I said, you know, because being um, in competition, being in the mindset of I want to be better than you um, is a very hurtful mindset, not only to that person, mm -hmm. but it's toxic to you as well, yeah. because that's not a healthy mindset to to say 
I'm going to do everything on my own. I'm going to build all this wealth. I'm going to flaunt it to everybody. And I'm going to reach the top by myself and flaunt it to everyone. Um, and so uh, after that, I started promoting that that hashtag. No, think more community over competition. You don't want competition. Like there's that's not the mindset you want. Plus, there is no competition. What there is no competition. <laughs> I am my competition. What com I am right. my competition. Right. You know, I want to be better than I was yesterday. What's the little gymnast name? The little girl who's the incredible gymnast that has broken every single record available. Oh my God, I don't know her name. Simone, Simone, Simone. It's Simone something, very famous girl, whatever. We can't think of her name right now, but she talked about how she she has now gotten to a point in gymnastics where she has, she can only break her own record. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Beat her. So she's just now only practicing to beat herself. I thought that was deep. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. wow. Now that's, wow. Deep. that's, that's how I it. see it. That's how I see it. That we should all wake up every day and try our hardest to be better than we were yesterday. That's my goal. Like I never look at the person to my left or the person to my right or what is, you know, Joe Schmo doing or the Joneses or whatever. Like I, I don't look at other people because I think that's a sad place to be yeah. where you're comparing yourself to other people. Um, you will never be happy because there's always going to be, you know, people that are doing more than you. Um, but when you can look at yourself and you can say, wow, you know, I'm, I'm definitely doing better than I was yesterday. You know, maybe I learned a new recipe or or maybe I controlled, you know, my emotions better today or, you know, whatever it is. Like when you can look at yourself and see your own growth, um, that's more fulfilling than you comparing yourself to someone else and having jealousy and those negative emotions. Right. Yeah. Oh my God, Jen. Well, it's 9 p.m. We've been on for an hour. Uh, we've talked about so many different things. Uh, this was a wonderful conversation. You answered all of my questions that I had for you. Um, one more time, how can some uh, people reach you? What's your Instagram? I know you have a YouTube channel, yes. all of that. So uh, the best way of reaching us is go going to our website. You can even request a consultation and we'll reach out to you. Uh, it's getaonhelp.com. Uh, Aon is A-E-O-N. Uh, the best email to reach us at is getaonhelp at gmail.com. Uh, our Facebook is Aon Counseling. Our Instagram is Aon Counseling. You can always text me. It's as easy as a text, even a Facebook message. We get people in through Instagram, just like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's just get them in. The point is to just get you to connecting with a person. And even if you don't connect to the person in the way that you were expecting, uh, we can always switch it up and find something better for you. So it's also, never you know, not having support. It's just like, let's get you the best support for you. Right, right. Um, and you said that, you know, you you handle the payment situation and there's a lot of options and things like that. Yeah, we uh, accept most major insurances. And right now they're even covering copays. So everyone gets essentially free therapy. It's wow. not to you. Your insurance is just going to pick up uh, all of it. If you happen to have an insurance that we're not credentialed with, not a problem. We have a group, which is, I think, the most accessible option. Uh, uh, led by women. It's mostly women right now. I believe they're just going to branch out to just being a co-ed group. And uh, and we also have like reasonable self-pay options. If anything, I'd rather you come in once a month and mm -hmm. spend zero percent of time. Okay. Exactly. I'd you have a little bit of, or listen, if you just don't have it, don't worry about it. Like we will work with you. There's always a way don't ever let money be the reason you don't come to find support. And we, we have it ready to ready to go right now. Um, That's awesome. And um, Aeon as well is on Instagram. Um, you have a YouTube channel as well too. Yeah, everything. Um, counseling. Aeon Counseling. Um, and what is the phone number again? 617-982-3996. Awesome. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for um, talking to my audience. I'm going to be uploading this video to my YouTube channel um, so that it's available to everybody and sharing it on my blog and all those different things, all those places just to reach as many people as possible. Um, and so yeah. thank you so, so much. Well, um, you, man, giving us the space to talk about this for sure. Was yeah, cool? absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.